Good morning. Welcome to the Daily Office. Thanks for joining me. This is Morning Prayer for Friday, August the 28th. It's the 13th week after Pentecost and week one in the Psalm cycle. The scripture for this service, Psalms 16 and 17, 1 Kings chapter 5 verse 1 through chapter 6 verse 1 and verse 7. Please join me in singing verse 4 of Psalm 95 to the tune of Cure and Obese. Listen to God's voice today and harden not your hearts as in the desert long ago when our forebears provoked God. Open my lips my mouth shall declare your praise. Hallelujah, preserve me, O God, for I put my trust in you. Hallelujah, Psalms 16 and 17. And please recite them with me. Hallelujah, preserve me, O God, for I put my trust in you. I have said you are my God, my good above all others. I delight in all the saints that are on the earth. But their sorrows shall increase that choose other gods. Their drink offerings of blood I will not offer, nor take their names upon my lips. For you are my portion and my cup. It is you that maintain my lot. My boundaries contain pleasant places, and I have a goodly heritage. I bless you, for you have given me counsel, and you also instruct me in the night. You are always before me. In, at my right hand, and I shall not be moved. Therefore my heart is glad, my soul rejoices, and my body shall rest in hope. For you will not leave me in hell, nor let me see corruption. You show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Hallelujah, hear my cause, which is right, O God. Attend to my cry and give ear to my prayer, which does not come from deceitful lips. Vindicate me, for, my, for your eyes see the truth. You have searched my heart. You have visited me in the night. You have tried me and find nothing wrong in me. I do not sin with my mouth like others. Because of your word I have kept from violence. Keep me in your paths that my feet do not slip. I have called on you, but you will hear me, O God, incline your ear to me, and listen to my words. Show your marvelous loving kindness, you that save by your right hand. Save them which put their trust in you from those that rise against them. Keep me as the apple of your eye, hide me under the shadow of your wings, from the wicked that oppress me, from my deadly enemies who circle about me. Their hearts are tight shutly, they are shut tightly, and with their mouths they boast. Now they have surrounded us in our steps. They watch, waiting to strike me down. Like a lion that is greedy for its prey, like a young lion lurking in secret places, rise, O God, and disappoint them, cast them down. Deliver my soul from the wicked by your sword. From those, O God, who are of the world, who find their reward in this life, who you fill with your treasure, they have abundance of children, and they leave their wealth to little ones. In my vindication, I will see your face. I shall be satisfied when I awake to see your glory. Glory to you, source of all being, eternal word and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Preserve me, O God, for I put my trust in you. Hallelujah. A lesson from the first book of Kings, chapter 5, beginning at verse 1. Now Solomon's rule was extended over all the kingdoms from the Euphrates, to the land of the Philistines and the boundary of Egypt. 
They brought Solomon tribute and were subject to him all of his life. And Solomon's daily provisions consisted of 30 cores of semolina and 60 cores of ordinary flour, 10 fattened oxen, pasture-fed oxen, and 100 sheep and goats besides deer and gazelles, roebucks and fatted geese. For he controlled the whole region west of the Euphrates. All the kings west of the Euphrates, from Tipsa to Gaza, and he had peace on all his borders round about. All the days of Solomon, Judah and Israel, from Dan to Beersheba, dwelt in safety, everyone under his own vine and under his own fig tree. Solomon had 40,000 stalls of horses for his chariots and 12,000 horsemen. All those prefects, each during his month, would furnish provisions for King Solomon and for all who were admitted to King Solomon's table. They did not fall short in anything. They would also, each in his turn, deliver barley and straw for the horses and the swift steeds to the places where they were stationed. And God endowed Solomon with wisdom and discernment in great measure, with understanding as vast as the sands on the seashore. Solomon's wisdom was greater than the wisdom of all the Ketamites and of all the wisdom of the Egyptians. He was the wisest of all men, wiser than Ethan and Herm, uh, Heman and Dards, the sons of Mahal. His fame spread among all the surrounding nations. He compounded there 3,000 proverbs and his songs numbered 1,500. He discoursed about the trees from the cedar to, in Lebanon to the hyssop that grows out of the wall. And he discoursed about beasts, birds, creeping things, and fishes. Men of all peoples came to hear Solomon's wisdom by all the kings of the earth who had heard of his wisdom. King Hiram of Tyre sent his officials to Solomon when he heard he had been anointed king in place of his father. But Hiram had always been a friend of David. Solomon sent this message to Hiram. You know that my father David could not build a house for the name of the Yahweh his God because of the enemies that encompassed him until the Most High had placed them under the soles of his feet. But now the Most High my God has given me respite all around. There is no adversary and no mischance. And so I propose to build a house for the name of Yahweh my God, as the Most High promised my father David, saying, Your son whom I will set on your throne in your place shall build a house for my name. Please then give orders for cedars to be cut for me in Lebanon. My servants will work with yours, and I will pay you my way any wages you may ask for your servants. For as you know, there is none among us who knows how to cut timber like the Sidians. And when Hiram heard Solomon's message, he was overjoyed. <clears throat> Praise be the Most High this day, he said, for granting David a wise son to govern his great people. And so Hiram sent word to Solomon, I have your message. I will supply all the cedar and cypress logs that you require. My servants will bring them down to the sea from the Lebanon, and at the sea I will make them into floats and deliver them to any place that you designate to me. There, I shall break them up for you to carry away, and you in turn will supply the food I require for my household. So Hiram kept Solomon provided with all the cedar and cypress wood he required, and Solomon delivered to Hiram 20,000 cores of wheat as provisions for his household, and 20 cores of beaten oil. Such was Solomon's annual payment to Hiram. The Most High had given Solomon wisdom, as he had promised him. 
There was friendship between Hiram and Solomon, and the two of them made a treaty. King Solomon imposed forced labor on all Israel. The levy came to 30,000 men, and he sent them to the Lebanon in shifts of 10,000 a month. They would spend one month in the Lebanon and two months at home. Adoniram was in charge of the forced labor. And Solomon also had 70,000 portions and 80,000 quarriers in the hills. Apart from Solomon's 3,300 officials who were in charge of the work and supervised the gangs doing the work, the king ordered huge blocks of choice stone to be quarried so that the foundations of the house might be laid with hewn stones. Solomon's masons, Hiram's masons, and the men of Gabal shaped them. And thus the timber and the stones for the building the house were made ready. In the 480th year, after the Israelites left the land of Egypt, in the month of Ziv, that is the second month, in the fourth year of his reign over Israel, Solomon began to build the house of Yahweh. And when the house was built, only finished stones cut at the quarry were used, so that no hammer or axe or any iron tool was heard in the house while it was being laid. Here ends the lesson. And now let us offer our prayers and petitions. And please respond, or please say the response after each verse. Defend us, and we shall shout for joy, for we put our trust in you. Merciful God, teach us your ways. Keep us from all sin today. Save your people and bless your inheritance. Feed us and lift us up forever. We sing of your power and mercy in the morning. You are our refuge in times of trouble. We place our hope in you, for with you is mercy and plenteous redemption. Every day we bless you. We praise your name forever and ever, and for all of your intentions. Together. Our beloved, which art in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us as we forgive others. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Let us pray. Save us from our enemies, O God, and vindicate us. May we live not for this life, but for the world to come. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Alleluia. This is the day that God has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Alleluia. And glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia.